Hello everyone in the cyberspace of Humo 2020 from the sunny Trondheim in Norway. I am Zaharula Papamichu and I would like to thank you all for being here today for this presentation and especially the organizers for all the efforts they have put on making this event come true. Today's presentation is on one of the remaining elusive issues in adaptive online learning and specifically on the determination of the dependent structure between learners' response time and knowledge mastery. Together with my colleagues, Aksit uh, Sharma and Mikhail Yanakos from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, we conducted a study to explore the nature of the relationship between those two variables, which we already knew that it's not linear. We all agree that the adaptive learning environments are in the epicenter of the technology enhanced learning research and community. And in order to adaptively scaffold the learners throughout the learning process, it is a prerequisite for the learning systems to make decisions by considering the learner models. Essentially, the learner models are estimations of learners' current states and approximations of next states based on the available observational data from their activity and behavior within a learning environment. The prevailing approaches for modeling learners' knowledge mastery can be distinguished into generic families. The knowledge tracing techniques, such as Bayesian knowledge tracing, and the logistic models, such as performance factor analysis or item response view. However, in any ability or mastery measure, both the result of interacting with the task and how long it took to reach the result needs to be considered. In other words, the observed response and response time jointly affect mastery. Learning more about the shape of the relation between those two variables is expected to allow us to study in more detail the impact that the, sp the time spent on the response has on the response accuracy, which in turn can be informative for the possible underlying processes. However, determining the, de the dependent structure between response time and correctness of response is not a trivial task and still remains an open issue. Lots of our previous work has been done on the topic, with most of the approaches employing a combination of response time and response accuracy to improve the overall accuracy of the learner models, without though exploring the relationship between those variables. The early approaches to understand and determine this relationship mostly utilized response time to directly predict the correctness of next response. Furthermore, um, approaches such as um, Z-scored response times or squared response time were also uh, um, tried. Overall, the approaches um, employed in adaptive learning settings indicated that the relation is not linear. Further to that, in, assessment, in adaptive assessment and testing settings, the most popular approach is the hierarchical framework, which uh, has as a major assumption that response time follows a log normal distribution. In that model, the conditional independence of response accuracy and response time is assumed, given the overall speed and ability. And while the correlation between response time and ability can be interpreted within a test taker, However, this assumption might be violated in the correlation between the variables across the stakers. To address this issue, it has been proposed to explicitly model the residual dependence between time and accuracy by incorporating the effects of the residual response time. Exploratory findings from several studies revealed a very stable curvilinear dependence when the residual dependencies are considered. However, this approach appears to have overfitting problems describing ra random error rather than a true underlying relationship. And again, in these settings, results indicate a nonlinear dependent structure between the variables. Overall, previous works converge on the fact that the dependent structure between response time and knowledge mastery needs to be determined, and this, uh, the objective of this study is to explore the degree of association between those two observations both in learning and in assessment settings. The dependence between two random variables is contained in their joint distribution. 
previous research results show that we need to go beyond common measures of linear dependence. So here we adopted a copula-based approach. The idea behind the concept of copulas is to separate the joint distribution function into the dependent structure and the marginal behavior. In a sense, copulas are functions that couple the marginal distribution to the corresponding joint distribution function. The theoretical foundation for the application of copulas is provided in Sklar's theorem, which in brief claims that any multivariate joint distribution can be written in terms of univariate marginal distribution functions and a copula function that describes the dependent structure between the variables. Here we consider only response time and knowledge mastery and thus we restrict ourselves to the Bavarian case. Most of, uh, the most of the copulas are parametric and there are basically two types. The copulas of uh, normal mixture distributions and their comedian copulas. The first type refers to the elliptical copulas such as the Gaussian and the student's T copula or for simplicity the T copula. And the second type refers to copulas that have simple closed forms, such as Gamble and Clayton copula. If the joint distribution is well represented by an elliptical distribution, for example, Gaussian or T, then the dependent structure, the dependent structure is linear. However, it has been argued that between response time and knowledge mastery, there is, no, uh, there is a non-linear dependence. Outside the world of elliptical distribution, the use of the linear co correlation coefficient may induce misleading conclusions about the dependence. There exist standard and useful dependent measures solely related to the copula and not to the margins. There are, for instance, rank correlations like Kendall stuff and Spearman's row or tail dependence coefficients. The tail dependence coefficients are measures of extremal dependence that quantify the dependence in the upper and lower tails of a Bavaria distribution of two random variables. Uh, note that the Gamble and Clayton copulas can only capture one side of the tail dependence and they cannot dis display negative dependence. And if this is the case, then these copulas would not fit. Therefore, these copulas should be rotated for 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 270 degrees, and then applied again. To illustrate how the dependence between um, response time and knowledge mastery can be investigated using the copula-based approach, we applied uh, this method to four datasets, two coming from intelligent tutoring systems and two from adaptive assessment systems. And we initially plotted the, data, the datasets to gain a um, uh, first intuitive insight about the observation, the distribution, and the existence of extreme values. Next, we sliced the student population data using the 10th or uh, 25th percentile, but any other fine-grained splitting can be utilized. And uh, we split both the response time and knowledge mastery into smaller data sets of subpopulations in smaller blocks in order to explore the bivariate dependent structure of for each subpopulation separate. After that, for each block, we fitted the theoretical models and concluded to the empirical models, choosing the ones with the lowest i. And the strength of the decided copula for each block was measured by the respective coefficient, which was uh, lambda upper for Clayton types, lambda lower for Gamble types, Kendall Kendall stuff for Gaussian and Spearman's row for T. The figures, the figures depict the fitting results for all datasets in the 25th percentile for simplicity reasons. In the figures, its color corresponds to one of the detected copula families. In all figures, uh, two corresponds to survival Clayton, which is Clayton rotated for 180 degrees. Six corresponds to survival gamble, seven corresponds to rotated gamble for 90 degrees, eight uh, corresponds to rotated gamble for 270 degrees, and nine corresponds to ghost. We can note that the T copula was not detected at all in the data, and the Gaussian was detected in very specific blocks. For the learning uh, data, 
the overlap of the detected uh, copulas across the data sets was uh, almost 94% uh, when we only considered the generic copula family. And it was around 70% when we take into consideration both the direction of the dependence and the copula family. The respective overlap for the assessment data set was uh, almost 63% despite the, the dependence uh, direction. Uh, the table summarizes the results for the daily dependence coefficients for its block for all data sets in the 25th percentile. In this table, the blocks correspond to the respective ones in the previous figure from bottom up and left to right. And for example, block 11 corresponds to low response time, low knowledge mastery, while block 44 corresponds to high response time, higher knowledge mastery. For most of the learning data, the detected copula reveals a strong or moderate de dependence structure, which means the tail co dependence coefficient is above 0 0.5. For the assessment data, most of the dependencies were moderate. Note that the number of students in each block is included to showcase that even for smaller partitions of learners, the copula-based method can map a bivariate function for the joint dependence between response time and knowledge master. Overall, out of the 10 theoretical copulas, five of them were empirically detected across datasets. From the elliptical copulas that imply a linear dependent structure, the T copula was not detected at all, and the Gaussian copula was detected in specific block. Hence, the nature of the underlying relationship between the variables of interest is not linear but some linearity is detected, as blocks in specific percentiles follow the linear behavior. Moreover, in its context, the detected copulas follow generic patterns across datasets for that context. In the terms of knowledge mastery and response time, those copulas shows that the co-movement of those variables in the tails of distribution follows specific patterns and the above-mentioned copulas are utilized to model those patterns. Furthermore, the overlap of the detected uh, empirical patterns between the different datasets was high, and the dependence was strong or moderate across datasets. The approach allows for nonlinear dependence detection and characterization for the identification of the exact underlying patterns of dependence, and captures both positive and negative dependencies. It is purely data-driven without overfitting the data, it is parametric without assumptions on the underlying distributions, and it is not affected by the differences in the marginal distribution. In terms of response times and mastery, the amount of time used by the learners to respond to a task and their knowledge mastery is reflected in the patterns. According to the pattern detected, the learners are located in one of the blocks, and this can guide the adaptation mechanism strategy. Furthermore, although the dependent structure is nonlinear, some linearity is detected, as the Gaussian copula is selected for mapping uh, in specific for the mapping in specific blocks, and the detection of this copula is in line with the high speed, high stakes rule, mostly detected used in uh, adaptive testing settings. However, here it is stronger in the learning data, indicating that some learner subpopulations can be modeled using the hierarchical approach. Still, the rotated Gamble and Clayton copulas allow for capturing both positive and negative dependencies, and as, as such, they can be utilized in the study of rapid guessing. Last but not least, the method allows for the detection of dependent structures even for extreme values in the dataset. Considering the contemporary uh, massive open online courses in which the subpopulations of the tails of the distribution might be thousands, the copula based approach can be scaled up and allows for detecting the nature of association of response time and knowledge mastery for those students and open the path for designing adaptive systems for such environments. There were also some uh, limitations. Specifically, we did not consider the characteristics of the tasks at all, 
which have been found to affect both response time and response accuracy. And these characteristics can be employed as exogenous predictors, as covariates in future explorations. In addition, the assessment datasets were relatively small compared to the bigger learning datasets, and some of the dependencies there were weak. Analysis of bigger assessment datasets, datasets is so thus uh, required. Uh, to conclude, as a next step, we are planning to incorporate the information we gained from this study regarding the copula families into the learning models to drive the adaptation and to evaluate the accuracy of the new models. So, thank you for your attention.